Well, Stephen, thanks for that uh, introduction, and uh, thanks for all your work uh, as a board member of my department. It is fantastic to have your uh, experience and your uh, commitment to, to this uh, and other industries there. And it is wonderful to be uh, at the, what is the, the world's largest uh, AI summit for businesses, uh, going from strength to strength, just as uh, Stephen says. Uh, and quite apart from the, uh, the range and reputation of the sponsors, the 10,000 visitors expected uh, here over the, uh, the course of the, the event uh, is testament to just how uh, engaged and how passionate this community is. Uh, it was almost 70 years ago to this day, uh, in 1948, just 15 miles upriver from here, uh, that a document, and I've got a, uh, a copy of the document uh, here in front of me. Uh, this document, uh, 70 years ago, landed on the desk of the National Physical Laboratory, then as now, the UK government's leading research lab. And I think it's got a good claim uh, to win the nomination for the greatest research report ever written. Uh, the title, uh, you probably can't see it, but the title in, um, in a very analog uh, typeface uh, is uh, Intelligent Machinery, uh, and the author, uh, A.M. Turing. It is a a report that is breathtaking uh, in its vision, in its confidence, in its intellectual fizz, uh, and its prescience, uh, this being uh, 1948. Uh, and many people in this room uh, will uh, have read that report, will be familiar with it. Those of you that haven't, uh, I recommend uh, that you do. Alan Turing uh, had discovered brilliant theoretical results in logic uh, at Cambridge University. And during the war, in pursuit of an overwhelmingly important national mission, he had become the most brilliant and innovative code breaker, not only building machines, but also building a team that continues to have a reputation that is legendary. Uh, at Bletchley Park, high theory merged with wires, transistors, and solder to crack urgent, couldn't be more urgent, real world problems. Then after the war, the National Physical Laboratory recognized the extraordinary winning combination of practical, theoretical, and human intelligence in the person of Turing and set him on his future path of building machine intelligence. And here we are today in direct descent with a renewed understanding that the momentous potential of the AI and data revolution will bear full fruit when all of us, brilliant scientists, businesses uh, as setters and solvers of real-world problems, investors as risk-takers, uh, and government as an enabler, coordinator, and partner all come together. Uh, and that's why, uh, as Stephen says, I've developed uh, our country's industrial strategy. Uh, and I'm so pleased that many of the, uh, the companies that I know are in this room, many of the individuals, many of the institutions, uh, came together as part of that industrial strategy, one of the first parts uh, to define uh, an AI sector deal uh, between the sector uh, and the government. Uh, the start uh, of a, uh, a deep and, I hope, rich relationship that's already resulted uh, in a billion pounds uh, investment being made. The changes that AI uh, is bringing are epochal. There aren't many moments in human history when a technology turns up that changes everything. Think of them, agriculture, the wheel, the printing press, then steam, chemicals, oil, electricity, then the microprocessor. And we are living through one of those moments now. In 2017, when London-based DeepMind uh, beat humanity's best Go player, a symbolic date entered the history books. So why is AI quite so revolutionary? Well, because previous technological revolutions, all of those that I mentioned a moment ago, discovered specific ways to improve human lives. But this revolution has discovered automatic ways of discovering more. Thus, to the power to improve the lot of humanity is unprecedented. Now, no wonder there are singularity mystics in California who believe this is taking us uh, towards uh, Starship Enterprise. Well, I'm, I'm for the enterprise, but uh, I'm not sure about the singularity. Uh, an instance, perhaps, of 
British pragmatism, empiricism and understatement uh, that has proved its worth in science and business. But the extraordinary transformation that's taking place, uh, these are not pie-in-the-sky notional uh, ideas. They're happening. I, you can see some of them outside in the exhibition that I've just enjoyed uh, visiting. Uh, so many of the different ways uh, in which the businesses uh, and people in this room are already using and being transformed by a AI. Uh, whether it's uh, Professor Rose uh, Luckin making a robotic teaching assistant that takes the drudgery out of routine marking and administration in exam season, I'm sure there are a lot of uh, teachers and educators uh, around the country, around the world who would recognize that. Uh, Rose Royce, I'm really looking forward to uh, hearing from Neil Crockett, the uh, uh, Chief Digital Officer, up next uh, on building autonomous ships. Uh, whether it's improbable, our latest UK-bred uh, unicorn, uh, $500 million uh, raised from SoftBank, congratulations uh, on that, building the most sophisticated general purpose simulations of reality ever seen. Uh, Memrise, the, the learning uh, app, uh, who I've just heard yesterday uh, had raised 11.5 million pounds. Uh, Quantaxa, harnessing the value of huge databases to combat financial fraud. Uh, whether it's Raven, uh, automating the, the dullest aspects of document control in a complex corporate legal process. No offense taken, uh, I hope, from any lawyers in the room for, uh, for the suggestion that every aspect uh, of their work is scintillating. Uh, or a composer automating the orchestration uh, of the latest symphony. Whether it's Babylon, the UK-developed health triage robot, revolutionizing frontline access to health uh, in places like Rwanda, uh, or Darktrace, the AI-powered security company that's already used by 5,000 global businesses uh, to keep their network secure. These are applications now that are already transforming uh, lives, not just here, but around the world. And I'm genuinely in awe uh, of the range, the creativity, and the power of what you in this room uh, are doing and building. And the more that I find out uh, about how the technology works, uh, how reinforcement learning in complex networks rewards one parameter uh, or downgrades another, the more I'm struck by the parallels uh, between the economy, uh, that somewhat complex system whose long-term health uh, my department has so much responsibility for, and an AI system. Indeed, at the very same time uh, that Turing was writing uh, in Teddington at the National Physical Laboratory, uh, a bit further down the river, uh, Hayek, the Nobel Prize winning economist uh, who made London his home for many years, was in his office at the London School of Economics, just six, year, six miles from where we stand today, working on his theory of the economy as, in effect, a massively parallel social computer. Individuals, companies, entrepreneurs were nodes that were uh, endlessly locally optimizing and feeding information to neighboring nodes. So in a sense, we're all involved in an enormously complex large-scale network optimization. Our industrial strategy uh, is, uh, we think, a, an important piece of that optimization. We need to be clear that we need to upgrade uh, our economy, version 4.0. Uh, for the great transformation that is coming to accommodate uh, all of the changes that you are making possible. And we approach uh, this task uh, inspired by the intelligent designers uh, that we see here uh, and we've benefited from in the past. We've set ourselves the grand challenge of putting the UK at the forefront of the AI and data revolutions. The Prime Minister has announced uh, our mission of using AI-powered early diagnostics, for example, to revolutionize cancer treatment uh, in this country. Uh, by 2030, uh, we want to see 20,000 more people uh, surviving cancer through the breakthrough that AI can bring in early diagnosis. And I hope that many of you uh, in this room will be involved in reaching that ambition to increase the probability uh, of survival uh, for common cancers. But the opportunities of AI run deep throughout our industrial strategy. Uh, taking the five foundations in turn, ideas. We know that we've got to upgrade and we've got to increase and we've got to keep faith with the, the pace uh, of possibility uh, that is so evident now uh, in this event here today. Uh, so we are investing um, an additional, an extra seven billion pounds uh, of public money uh, in research and development over the next five years the biggest increase uh, in R&D investment that any UK government has ever made. 
uh, on skills. We know how skills are absolutely fundamental to the ability to, uh, to embrace the possibilities that we see before us. Uh, and we're investing in the deep skills that are needed, supporting our world-class universities throughout the country uh, to build on their strengths. London and Edinburgh, for example, for pure AI and computing research. Uh, the Queen's University in Belfast for cryptography. Uh, Birmingham and Liverpool in medtech, to name just a handful of those. Uh, and thanks to our new funding that we've uh, just announced, uh, 1,000 more researchers every year from all over the world will be studying for an AI-related PhD uh, in UK universities. Uh, and I'm very pleased to be able to announce today that our AI master's program, a central plank uh, of the AI sector deal, that's brought together the British Computer Society and the Turing Institute with leading universities uh, and businesses like Ocado, Amazon, and Rolls-Royce uh, will start work next month. Anywhere, uh, of course, uh, access to top quality digital networks uh, is vital to support the development of the AI and data driven economy that we're all committed to. Currently, superfast broadband is available to 91% of UK premises uh, and by 2025, 15 million premises will have full fibre. We are completely uh, persuaded and passionate about the need to upgrade our electronic uh, infrastructure. I've asked the regulators, when we think of the business environment that has been so successful for London uh, and the UK uh, in the past, uh, part of that is to make sure that we have the right regulatory standards and the right agility uh, in regulation. So I've asked the regulators of the sectors that many of you uh, here are busy disrupting uh, to build on the sandbox concept to find imaginative ways to be innovation friendly. And places are so important. Here we are in London, which is a crossing point uh, for so many of the technologists uh, and the brains uh, and, the, uh, and the entrepreneurs and investors that are making uh, AI transformational. But it's not just London. All around the country uh, are densely connected network uh, of global top 10 university cities and towns creates thriving places in which workers can find the jobs of the future and firms will be able to count on the skilled, creative and confident workforce uh, that you need to build it. Uh, indeed, Tech Nation's 2018 report, published just last month, described a network of more than 3,500 uh, tech meeting, meeting up groups throughout the UK uh, with over 1.6 uh, million individual members. Uh, and to just to underline the fact that tech doesn't just live in London, uh, these meetup groups meet in 283 locations right across the country. AI is at the uh, center of a thriving digital tech sector, now worth, uh, as we saw earlier, uh, hundreds of billions of pounds to the UK economy. Uh, Tech-related investments in Britain last year surged by 90%, uh, more than France, Germany, and Sweden combined. And this investment and growth is a tribute to the intellectual creativity that comes from this, such a key part of what we offer to the world. When it comes to Nobel Prizes uh, in the sciences, we come second only to the United States of America. But we have 50% more Nobel Prizes per head of the population than the USA. Uh, when it comes to universities uh, in the global top 100, again, we come second only to America. Uh, but we have a whopping 2,200% more of them per square mile uh, than uh, they have in America. Why does this matter so much? Because innovation, creativity, thriving lives, and thriving places all go with dense networks and connections. In many ways, innovation is like a chemical reaction. The concentration of inputs matters. And indeed, the facts bear this out. With less than 1% of the world's population, our universities account for 16% of the world's most highly cited uh, academic articles. That excellence leans on geography and language and the warm welcome that we've always extended to talent from all around the world. I mention our record of Nobel Prize winners, but those uh, of you that have had the privilege to, uh, to see the Nobel Prizes uh, awarded uh, will know that in the sciences, uh, at least, most Nobel Prizes these days are awarded to teams uh, rather than individuals, and most often those teams are international teams. Uh, there's something in that that tells about the, the power uh, of international connections uh, for creativity. 
Uh, we want to encourage uh, and extend that welcome uh, in the future, as we have in the past, to talent uh, from all over the world. But it also rests on the key foundations, organizational foundations for good research, openness, curiosity, independence, and meritocracy. Uh, a change as momentous as this uh, needs not just sectors, industries, universities, and localities to work together, as if that were not already a huge task. I'm conscious that the government needs to ensure that the whole country understands and supports the great challenges ahead. If we remember for a moment, to a moment in uh, history the, the Luddites, they've always uh, come up as the group that was on the wrong side of history, like the dinosaurs. Uh, they were that, but they were also skilled artisans, ordinary people, frightened for their future place in their society at the time. Today we know that their fears turned out to be unjustified and that we've never had more demand for good, skilled jobs uh, than when the machines uh, take the grunt out of human work. And I'm confident that it can be the same again. AI and automation raising the demand for the most human work uh, and the government with business and educational bodies uh, will deliver the institutions that allow everyone to develop the skills that they will need in the future. But it's not only as workers that some are fearful. Take our lives as consumers. For example, personalized pricing, technology designed to be addictive, uh, or our data uh, being seen to be uh, used uh, against our interests. Let me give you an example uh, of a current uh, problem, a current uh, regulatory issue uh, that might appeal to you, some of the, those of you that have flown in uh, from uh, on an airline for, for this event. If you've traveled with a family member bearing the same surname, did your airline's booking system automatically place you together? Or did it automatically place you in non-adjoining seats, perhaps at the opposite ends uh, of the plane, to try to extract from you a premium payment for the privilege of traveling together? Uh, I can tell you that when uh, algorithms uh, result in such uh, revenue-raising possibilities. Uh, the public uh, acceptance and understanding uh, of this uh, is something that needs to be taken into account. In my experience, uh, people do not expect uh, that they should be uh, separated uh, from the people that they're traveling uh, with, even if uh, they would be prepared uh, to uh, pay more. And so it's an example that on questions of trust, on such questions of trust, uh, the uh, the overall trust of consumers in what is possible to be done through AI uh, could be won or lost. Our role in the government uh, is to bring forward an environment uh, in which companies treat customers with the respect that they deserve, uh, that they don't use data and digital technology to exploit them. Uh, the green paper that we published uh, in April has started a conversation on that. Shifting social understandings and practices. Well, we've done this uh, before. Think of the time that we've been able to build popular support for stem cell research. We're doing the same thing around the use of data and algorithms by establishing the Center for Data Ethics and Innovation uh, with the goal of developing a new national consensus uh, about the positive role of data and AI. And I'm delighted that Roger Taylor uh, was this morning announced as the chair uh, of that Center for Data Ethics and Innovation. Roger founded Dr. Foster, uh, and understands how the innovative use of data can deliver huge be benefits uh, for service users uh, as it did in the world uh, of healthcare. Uh, let me give you just one example uh, of what I mean. Uh, we have our mission to massively improve medical diagnostics uh, with AI. Uh, our side of the deal uh, to achieve this is to provide funding, for sure. But to be even more valuable, it must allow secure access uh, to the great resource that is our NHS data to be used for the benefit of the patients themselves. To do that, we need the public to trust the power that this unleashes will be used to help them, to help us, uh, live longer, healthier, uh, better lives. Our democracy and institutions have the pragmatism, the legitimacy, and the flexibility, and they need to have this to rise to the challenge of bringing the country together behind the momentous transformations that you're going to be talking about uh, today. Uh, and this is, of course, uh, a sense in which our task in creating this better future uh, is, in fact, different uh, from the task of optimizing an algorithm. 
the ultimate object and purpose is always enhancing human capabilities. So let me end by coming back to Alan Turing's extraordinary research proposal, uh, those 70 years ago. When describing social intelligence, uh, a form that he does not think he can automate, he writes, and I quote, the search for new techniques must be regarded as carried out by the human community as a whole. The power of the uh, possibilities uh, of AI transforming the world for good is immense. We here today bring together all of the skills and the functions to succeed in this most important of tasks, to search these new landscapes uh, for the good, uh, to echo Turing's words uh, of the human community as a whole. Uh, together, it's evidence that the talent, uh, the inventiveness, uh, the tools that we have to solve some of the big problems uh, of humanity uh, align all with the public good. Uh, this is a fantastic and exciting moment uh, for all of us that have the privilege to be part uh, of this sector. I wish you well for your discussions uh, later in the day uh, and over the next two, two days. Thank you very much indeed for uh, allowing me to open proceedings.